Hi, I'm Austin Griffith. Uh, I think a lot about uh, developer tooling and developer onboarding into Ethereum. Uh, I got into the space building games and uh, seeing some of the presentations earlier just warmed my heart, seeing a lot of cool uh, concepts that I've been tinkering with for a long time kind of put into production and, and into games. Uh, the first thing I want to show off is Scaffold ETH. Uh, it's a great way for you to prototype apps and get something into your users' hands quickly if you're building on Ethereum. Uh, I'm going to just create like a quick little smart contract here that is kind of an ownership pattern where uh, we define some owner and then uh, only the owner can set the purpose. It's just a, an arbitrary string. And I'm going to yarn deploy that. What, what I want to show here is this iteration loop that you get into, where you're tinkering with solidity, you're kind of testing your assumptions, and then the front end is kind of auto adapting as you as you make those changes. A, a very remix like I saw Rob from Remix out in the crowd somewhere. A very remix like uh, interface, and I think that's one of the most important first things to do when you get into Ethereum is just like tinker around with solidity. A great place to go is the Remix IDE. Uh, if you're building a front end, uh, Scaffold ETH has that same experience, but then you can kind of deploy something to production. So we, what I've done here is just create a simple uh, app where there's an owner, this, this dude, and only the owner can set the purpose. Uh, the reason why I wanted to show that off is just show how you can, you know, maybe we have like a counter here, UN 256, public counter equals 69, nice. And we'll deploy that, right? So you're just making small changes. You're pasting things in, and you're getting some feedback from the front end about those, those new items. And you can kind of poke at your contract and learn. There we've got our counter at 69. OK, so what I want to test here is this require statement. Do I have this require statement written correctly? So hopefully we're the owner. I'll grab some funds from the faucet. And I should be able to say, hello, world. Didn't spell it right. Doesn't matter. Now I'm going to do something. I'm going to bring up an incognito window. And I'm going to go to localhost, what, 3002? I have a few things running here. Got to get on the right port. There we go. Uh, and you'll notice a different address. Kind of we have green guy over here, and then we have kind of red guy over here. I'll grab some funds from the faucet, and uh, this shouldn't work, right? And if I hit that, it says something like not the owner. So I was able to kind of like quickly write some solidity, see it show up in the front end, kind of test it. And then eventually you start working on a UI. There's some example UI elements here. It shows you how to like hook a button up to, to make a smart contract call. Uh, and then eventually you yarn generate and you yarn deploy. And you can put that app uh, into production pretty quickly and get it into your users' hands and see if they're interested in it and kind of experience the user experience, right? The UX of blockchain is notoriously hard. So I, I would uh, urge you to, to spend some time using your app a lot and, and kind of figure out where the, the speed bumps are for your users. OK, so that's Scaffold ETH. Great way to iterate, great way to prototype, great way to learn, great, great way to get prototypes into production, great way to build decentralized apps on Ethereum. Uh, it, it's, uh, it's what I use to create Speedrun Ethereum. So Speedrun Ethereum is like an onboarding platform. If, if you know Web2 devs or if you're a Web2 dev and you haven't really gone down the rabbit hole of Web3, or if you have like a mobile developer, DevOps developer, some, somebody that is thinking about getting into Ethereum, tell them to speed run Ethereum. It's a great kind of uh, onboarding curriculum. You start by tinkering with Scaffold ETH, and then you go through these uh, really like targeted uh, tutorials that take you through kind of really showing off what Ethereum is good at, and also some of the gotchas. So speed run Ethereum. Uh, Around that, I have the build guild, which is like an incentivization layer. Uh, as uh, developers come through the speed run, there's still kind of a phase where they know how to build a DEX and a multi-sig, but they're not quite ready to make their own product. And the build guild kind of streams ETH to tons of developers to basically keep building and creating like generic components and forkable uh, uh, tutorials for the ecosystem. And you can even see some developers kind of withdrawing from their funds here. I'm going to try to do this whole presentation in about a half an hour. So I'm going to kind of speed through some of this stuff. OK, so that's Scaffold ETH and Speedrun Ethereum. Uh, but the talk is about 
blockchain games for blockchain devs. And this is kind of a new thing that I'm getting into. Since I do a lot of developer relations and kind of try to uh, engage developers and bring more developers in, one really fun thing that we've been finding recently is that we can make blockchain games for blockchain developers. And we're going to be playing a game tonight. Uh, it's sponsored by Chainlink, where it's like going to be a three hour long game where there's just this game board that we created uh, here. Basically, we created a game in about you know, 24 hours, like 48 hours ago. And we just kind of like, well, let's make a, you know, a game board. Let's have some health and some gold get dropped. And then let's have some players move around. It, it used to be like top down. And I you know, rotated it, transformed it. OK, now it's an isometric board. And I'll, I'll, we'll bring in some players and play this game in a little bit. Uh, but this idea of building blockchain games for blockchain developers is really exciting, and I'm excited to try it out. Uh, I think the best way to try it out is if we try to play here. So the way it works tonight is you have to, I'm going to deploy a game contract, and then you have to deploy another contract that talks to my game contract. And your middleware contract will have some logic in it that will help you play the game. Uh, today, for this group, I'm going to take out that middleware layer, and I'm just going to deploy the game, and then I'm going to deploy a little controller app. So you'll be able to go to it on your phone or on your laptop. You'll have to send some Rinkaby in. So if you don't have any Rinkaby, go grab some Rinkaby real quick. And uh, I think I'm going to make this interesting. Uh, Tech had a good idea a little bit ago. I think I'm going to give $200 away to the person who has the most gold at the end of the hour. So it's 3.29 now. So at 4 PM, on the high score list, if you have the most gold, I'm going to send that address $200 of Ethereum. So <laughs> I don't know if that's even legal. We're in Amsterdam. Everything's legal. <laughs> so hopefully, have some fun. Play this game. OK, so here's the, here's the run. So talking, talking through games real quick, uh, I really don't even need to do an introduction on games because we've seen so many great blockchain games already. I don't need to talk about burner wallets. I don't need to talk about how Galleass has commit reveal. Uh, burner wallets would be Nifty Inc. Galleass talks about commit reveal and a bunch of other uh, kind of interesting concepts like movement in games. Uh, obviously, like GameFi is coming and marketplaces are going to be here and L222 is here. and. Uh, a lot of things that normally I'd be preaching about, but we've got a whole crew of people that totally understand that already. So uh, I'm going to dive right into the game here. So uh, let me see. I'm going to go ahead and so the game is here. It's an empty game board for now. Uh, and I'm going to go ahead and log in with my MetaMask, switch it over to Rinkaby. And I'll show you kind of what, what, what the game does. So basically, you, you register, and that, uh-oh, there we go. You, you register with the game contract, and that will place you uh, using block hash. It doesn't even use VRF or commit reveal. It places you using a random uh, previous block hash on the game board. And then there's another mecha mechanism here where I can, actually, it'll just let me do it from the front page, I think, once I register. Let's see. So once I register, man, Rinkaby is slow. I should have done this on a faster test net. <laughs> uh, once you register, you can, you, you, you'll have like this little game piece in the board. We decided to do like a silly game board with the silly game piece. I feel like there have been uh, so much more interesting games showed off today. So this is going to be kind of a boring one. But what's interesting about it is this smart contract middleware layer that we're going to add in that you'll have to deploy. Boy, that Rinkeby transaction is taking a long time. Oh, it's just my front end reading it. Hmm. Mm -hmm -hmm. OK, so uh, the piece, the way that you will interact with the game is I've deployed a, a second app that looks like this. Instead of having the whole game board, you just have your health, your position, up, down, left, and right, the register button, and the collect button. So your, tonight, your smart contract will have to call all this stuff, but you guys can just do this from the front end. So what you'll do is you'll, uh, you can connect to your wallet. It'd be best if you could connect to your ENS address. But if you're using a burner wallet, it's a little faster because you can make moves quicker. So I'm going to use a burner wallet here. And I'm going to use a punk wallet. If you haven't used punk wallet, I should show that off too. 
punkwallet.io is a Wallet Connect first uh, burner wallet that uses punks as the uh, kind of the avatar. You get a deterministic punk when you land. So I am going to use my punk wallet here, and I'm going to put it. I've got it on Ethereum because I've got my $500 of Ethereum. So I'm going to send $200 of that Ethereum by the end of this talk. But uh, I'm going to use my Rinkaby. I'm going to scan that. I'm going to send like 100 bucks of Rinkaby. And then this player should have plenty of gas now to uh, play the game. So this is your controller. And I'm going to paste this too. You're going to need this controller. Uh, oh, there, I finally registered. Cool. OK, before I do that, let's, let's, get the, let's get this out here. Oh, ETH build. ETH build is also a nice way to tinker around with <laughs> blockchain concepts. Here I have like a, I'm, what am I, generating a new uh, mnemonic. And you see how that uh, creates a key pair. And from the key pair is derived the address. And we can make a transaction with it. Uh, but I don't want to use it for that. I would just want a QR code. And I want to display some text. Nope. Yep. That'll work. OK, so amsgame.surge.sh is what you're going to. So there is the uh, QR code. So if you scan that, you should have the app. And if you uh, connect your wallet, make sure you're on Rinkaby, or you send a little Rinkaby to your app, uh, you can kind of fund your account. So I'll kind of keep this QR code around. Let's see, how am I going to do that? Oh, whoops, whoops, sorry. Here we go. Boop, 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 boop. Kind of like, oh man, that. OK, so we've got a QR code. I'll try to keep that kind of in the bottom of the game for now. Uh, hopefully, you can scan that. Is it big enough? I think it's probably big enough. So you will get this interface. You will get this kind of up, down, left, right when you scan that. And uh, what you'll do, oh, I've got my $100 of Rinkaby now, is you'll hit register. That'll be your first uh, action. So once you hit register, it will create a transaction. Notice I didn't have any pop-ups. I'm using a burner wallet here built into Scaffold ETH. Uh, once that register happens, then uh, you'll show up in the game. So we're kind of like this purpley blue dude, right? Let's see if I can find purpley blue dude. Oh, yeah, black hole dot ETH. All right. Now, I don't know who you are, but I like you. Uh, so yeah, so this dude's in. Where's purpley dude? There's purpley dude. Where's black hole? Black hole's right here. And then there's my, my owner. OK, so let's get started. I'm just going to, oh, yes. Oh, yes. Here they come. Here they come. Oh, I love you guys. <laughs> All right, here we go. I'm going to shuffle some prizes. I'm going to drop some gold and some health. So the one thing that I did different here, I made one small change to the smart contract. I created this attribution divider. Uh, it's usually 50 for tonight. Uh, it's 25 today. And what that means is as you move around on the game board, you're going to lose health. And you're going to lose health quicker than tonight. So your movements are, need to be pretty precise uh, as you move and pick up. You'll be able to pick up health and gold. Gold is the thing that's going to win you the $200, but you need to have health to move around. You'll notice that someone has already, blackhole.eth has already made a move, and therefore is kind of at the bottom of the, the high score list. Oh, yes, we got, oh, black, there's a second one. Okay, Sturmy, Sturmy's in. Okay, so I am going to put some prizes out on the game board. I'm going to put two things of health and two things of gold. And it'll be your job to navigate to that health and that gold. Now, tonight, you'll have a smart contract. The health and the gold will trigger events. You will want to program your middleware contract to be smarter about how it picks these things up. In fact, you'll probably do some multi-calls and some interesting stuff where your player will warp around on the board. Uh, it, it has this attrition that happens as you move, and that attrition comes from randomly from the block hash. So you'll always also probably program your contract to only move at certain block hashes. So there's gold on the board. You can see some gold here. There's health on the board. You can see some health here. So now your job is to kind of move around and go pick that stuff up. Oh, yeah, there's more players flowing in. This is working. It's working. Oh, my gosh. OK, so there's gold on the board. No one has picked up any gold yet. 
uh, I'm going to, let's see, it's going to take me a lot of work to get to that gold. I'm probably going to keep my player right here for a little bit. Let's drop, I, I was going to have the prizes show up kind of slowly as people came in, but we already have like enough players to play the game. So I'm just going to drop some more golden health so there's like more resources on the board so we can get to them quicker. And again, this is just like a dumb game we, cr we came up with in 24 hours. Like it's, it's certainly not pushing the boundaries like a lot of games I've seen already today. This is just more of the game itself is pretty simplistic. It's about the interface to the game and how you can build a smart contract to play the game and how this kind of like brings together smart contract devs to do something fun and, and kind of challenges them. Look at all the players in this game. There's a lot of gold over here kind of on the, on the west side. And so, yeah, I'm gonna just keep dropping gold and health. So you're going to want to get some health. You can see that, that, that Black Hole and Sturmy, folks that are moving around, you're losing like 10 health per move. So that, that uh, attrition rate is pretty high. I probably shouldn't have gone all the way down to 25 with the divider. So the, yeah, this is just a game test. We may like run out of health here. Are you guys playing on a mobile over there? I love that. You guys playing on a, la on a, on a phone? That's so cool. Okay, so, oh, yeah, so whoever, whoever these two are over here, y'all should be grabbing that gold. So no one has actually collected any gold yet. I'm kind of, kind of worried that, <laughs> that like, uh, maybe the collect gold doesn't work or something, or maybe it's hard to, like, find where you are on the board and where you need to go. Yeah, so let's see. So uh, this gold right here is at 313. This gold right here is at 312. This is, uh, what, eight, eight, nine, seven, yeah, nine, nine, nope, nine, eight. This is at nine, eight. You can kind of see, how about we zoom in a little bit, just for a little bit and kind of look around the board. You can kind of see like the, the coordinates, right? There's some health. Uh, there should be more gold and health though. Huh. Let's see, if I just drop some gold, it's like, I feel like maybe it's not seeing, let's see, do we see some gold show up somewhere? Oh yeah, there's health. Okay, so maybe it is dropping these. Oh, Rinkaby and Fura just got hammered. Of course. Oh man. Am I gonna have to switch to a different RPC live up here? Let's see what happens. Ooh, whoops. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Pocket or Alchemy, right? Yes. I, they do, actually. It's right here. So, like, it would take me two seconds to make that change in the app. Uh, let's see. Yeah, I wonder. So, I don't even see. I see Pocket and Alchemy here, but I don't even see Infura. So, I wonder where that Infura is even coming from. Oh, no. Our map. We're flying blind now. <laughs> Uh, what we could do is we could look at, let's see, can we go to the contract on Etherscan and find some events? We could probably find where the gold is by looking at a specific event. Oh man, flying blind is not good. Uh, yeah, this is really hard to read. At 7F, right? So 715, there's some gold if you're, if you're headed that way. But movement is so hard, oh man. No. No. <laughs> Rinkaby and Infura trashing us. Okay, so what do, what do we need? Like a different Infura key? Where, where is it even reading from Infura? I feel like, oh, I bet it's ETH hooks, and I bet it's something I can't even get to. Dang it. Dang it, dang it, dang it. What could we do? Uh... I, w I would love to just bring Pocket in and read the, it's using the ETH hooks library and that probably has Infura hard coded into it or something. And we've reached our Infura limit. Uh, let's see. Is there even any chance we can get a game board back here? Or is it just gonna, man. Oh, oh. Wow, it's fetching a lot. 
Oh no, our game board is trashed. Uh, let's see. Let me see if I can edit, like bring in a different Infura key real quick. Man, how do I do that? I can't do it secretly. Can I unplug my laptop real quick and then like go get an Infura key and plug it back in? Let's, let's see, I'm gonna do that real quick. Sorry, oh, I hope this works. Okay, BRB. Going to get another Infura ID. Okay, I got the project ID without showing the secret off. Paste that in there. Okay, let's see if the uh, video comes back. Okay, okay, let's try this with a new key and see if we get any luck here. Whoa. Come on, go get it. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, all right, we got a game board back. <laughs> thank you, thank you, Infura, for a second key. Uh, I learned a lesson here about using Infura for a live demo. And also, you saw how much it was pulling. This is mostly my fault. Okay, so we're still loading some stuff in. There's still a lot of gold here. So there's gold at 18.6. There's gold at 9.8. And what is that, 7.7? Seven, seven? There's a lot of gold, a lot of gold to be had. But it's hard for you as the player to know which way to move without a global map. Uh, but you can find yourself on the board using the, you can see your blocky under there, and you, it should show your coordinates in your app. Ooh, do we have a high score list? We still have no gold collected. Oh, but this dude's super close. Whoever you are, who is that? Oh, I can't find your ENS name. Oh, look at all these players. This is so cool. Oh, oh, this dude's like on some gold right here. Who's, who's at three, who's at three, what is that, three? 411, whoever's at 411 should call collect gold right now and it will take you to the top of the list and perhaps win you $200. Ooh, whoever's all the way over here at 40, just go to the right too and hit collect gold. Oh, he went to the right one or she went to the right one. Go get it. Go get it. Okay, so I'm, not, I'm, I'm gonna try not to mess with anything here. I don't, want, I don't wanna break that Infura key. Let's see, where's, oh, you went too far. Take it back to the left. Oh, someone's got gold. All right, we've got, we've got the top of the list here. Who's this homie? It's a burner wallet, wow, about to, about to have $200 in a burner wallet. Okay, so we have like probably 15 minutes left. Uh, we'll probably just let the game keep running. There's not like a ton. There's not like a ton I can talk through here. Uh, the, the, the goal here is just like, can I test this game out? What falls over? It looks like Infura was the first thing to fall over. I need to figure out how to pull those. Oh, yes, there's a lot of movement on the game board now. Every 15 seconds, we're seeing kind of a big shift, a big heartbeat. Oh, we got gold about to get collected right here. And again, this is just like a dumb game that we created in 24 hours. We created a game board. An artist drew up a little warrior for us. The warrior moves around on the screen. The goal here is to have this middleware smart contract to get in and, and uh, have you as the blockchain developer. The only way you can move your piece is to tell your smart contract to tell our smart contract to move your piece. And there's lots of like fun 
optimizations you can build into that smart contract. So hopefully we'll have, oh yeah, we got lots of gold. Here we go. We got a race for the gold now. We got, we got some folks picking up some gold. Okay. I like to see that. I probably just might like drop some more gold here. So health doesn't matter. You can run yourself almost all the way out of health. You can see like Sturmy has done the most movement so far, uh, but he has plenty of health left to keep moving. So even at this high attrition rate, I think you're fine. Keep moving, keep make moves, like don't be afraid to move. Someone's about to collect some health here. You can pick up some health as you need, but I would say that like, don't optimize for health right now, optimize for gold. Start heading toward that gold. Um, let's see, what else can I do? Let, let, me, let me get one going here. Where's my little homie? Let's see if I can get this little homie in the game and play a little bit. Oh, but you need, need to see the game board. Anybody need to see the QR code again real quick? The QR code just leads you to, uh, I'm gonna get rid of it in a second. It just leads you to, I can't remember the URL anymore amsgame.surge.sh. So amsterdamgame.surge.sh. Uh, thank you, Surge, for being a dope, dope ass company that lets us deploy a bunch of apps to you for free. Okay, I'm gonna close this QR code. Uh, if you don't have it, it's probably, you can just type in amsgame.surge. All right, cool. I'm gonna go ahead and zoom this out a little bit. Shrink it over here. Then I'm gonna bring in my controller. Nifty Inc, cool, cool, cool. Check out Nifty Inc. Uh, oh, the DAOG, I wanted to bring this up earlier. What, what a cool game that used emojis earlier, right? Uh, this, is, this is the combination of an emoji, this is called the DAOG. When the, when the Moloch DAO first came out, I created a game where you uh, participate in this game by clicking on these little, uh, resource tiles and each one is a different emoji and you create the game, basically you create the narrative and the rules of the game as you go by voting within a, a Moloch DAO. So there's this Moloch DAO at the bottom and we kind of vote in stuff. In this particular case, I'm like clicking like crazy, click, 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 click with a burner wallet and all of those are, uh, you know, quick transactions on Gnosis chain. Okay, okay, enough of that. Enough of that. Let's go find, how's our game board looking? What are we at? 150, looking good. A lot of gold over here in this Northwest region. So you want, yeah, if, you, if, you, if you're flying blind, you want to get toward like 8, 8. Oh, wow, a lot of movement there. Whoa. Okay, so that was cool. We almost saw a warp, and maybe that was just because the app was like, behind the scenes for a while, but you really can like do like these warp manu maneuvers where you basically sign five or six transactions and they get processed in a single block. Now you can't do that with my MetaMask over here, right? If I hit down, I'm basically going to move down and it's gonna mine that one transaction and I'm gonna wait for that transaction to go through and then it mines it and my character moves one, right? But with a burner wallet, we can do something a little more interesting. Let's see if I can find, oh no. Oh no. Hold strong. Let's see, close that, close that. Where, oh, here it is. Here's my little controller. Okay. So I'm going to, Sturmy's on the board with 50. Wait, where'd it go? Yeah, there it's loading. Uh, so F, FDE is winning with 200 gold. About to win 200 USD bones in ETH and I'm gonna send it to you with my burner wallet. It's working, okay. So what I wanna show, let's see if I can even find my character in here because it's, Oh wait, did I not register? Let me call register here. Oh, I think I already did. What's going on? Load it up. What are we at? Get out of the way here. Oh, there's some more gold here. Someone's close. Someone's close to picking up some, oh yeah, someone's close here. Sturmy, it's Sturmy, he's picking it up. All right, let's drop some more gold on the, on the world. Nope, not collect gold, that wasn't what I wanted. Drop some more gold. We don't need to worry about health. Health is fine. Just get moving. 
You got eight minutes left. Eight minutes. All right, I'm dropping gold like crazy here. Let's get a bunch of drop gold transactions. Yeah, see, 398. So I was thinking, the thing I was testing here, A, can we get a bunch of people in the game? B, is Infura or something else going to fall over? And C, like, is this a too high of an attrition rate? Actually, I think this, this attrition rate is pretty good. Like, you spending, you know, 20% of your health or more like 40% of your health to collect that much gold is about right. Oh, and tonight, you'll have that middleware contract and every time you upgrade your contract, it's going to cost you 20% of your health. So you'll maybe do that a couple times and, and pay the price, but you may create some kind of a, like create two or upgrade pattern to save yourself that loss of health. OK, uh, let's see. Can I, can I move? I don't, it's not like, I think maybe th this Infura is hosed also. Let's see. Yep, <laughs> OK. So my character can't move because it's using, it's probably, everyone is probably using that at same Infura on that app that I deployed. So probably we're all having issues with Infura. Sorry. I will fix that before tonight. That's why, why we do test rounds. Oh, OK, my position's at 0, 017. OK, OK, OK. That means I'm right down here. Yeah, yeah, OK, so I'm right here. I'm this dude right on that health. So I should be able to actually collect health Let's see if this works. Yeah, all right. And that's going to take me to the top of the list, probably. That's going to, well, top of the list of health. But it's the gold that matters. OK, so one thing I want to show, watch this. So this is my character right here. They just collected some, some health here. That health should disappear, I think, right? That's me. Yeah, that looks like, yeah, the health disappeared. OK, so if you were looking at it with the MetaMask wallet, you saw how I was like clicking the transaction, waiting for it to get mine, clicking the transaction. Watch, watch me queue up just like a bunch of right. I'm going to go, let's see, I'm going to go get this gold right here. So I'm going to go one, two, three, four, about five, six over. And then about 10 to the right. All right, so I'm going to go one, two, three, four, five, six. Oh, already known. Fine. And then I'm going to go one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10 transactions. Let it flow. And let's just see. Now, this dude should warp, right? He's going to end up over here somewhere. I don't know how many of those transactions actually are going to go through and get mined. Oh, someone else is going to beat me to the goal. Oh, wait, did I already get? Damn, he jumped all the way to here but I don't see the gold anymore. I don't know if like, oh, there's gold here. Maybe it already got collected. What do we add up here? 250, FDE, and C13 are neck and neck. Five minutes left. Let me drop some more gold. I don't see any more gold on the board. I feel like maybe something has happened with, uh, oh no, there's gold right here. There's gold at 1221. If you can get to 1221. This dude right here just needs to go north twice and they will own it. All right, six minutes left, five minutes left. Who will be the winner? 300. FDE and C C13 are very close. There's also no civil resistance. So you could just open up like 10 different machines at this address and have characters. So tonight we'll have a little bit different thing for civil resistance. Ooh, there's gold on the board. Where is that? 21.5? 21.5 and 22.6. Ooh-wee, look at all that movement. This is cool. Thank you guys for playing. This has been awesome. All right, I think this character's done. I'm not going to worry about that. Let's just focus on the last four minutes. There's like, di players are disappearing. I have no idea what's going on. It's like showing them, and then, then they're gone. I don't know if just the Infura is totally hammered or what. It's updating, though. Like, there's people grabbing gold still. 
All right, one more drop of gold, and then we'll let it play out and finish. So yeah, to, to conclude, uh, if you uh, are a developer or you know developers, getting into Ethereum is complicated. You kind of need to learn the why of decentralization first, but then the how is, is very complicated. Building, building a stack to build on Ethereum uh, is a lot of work. Uh, so that's why kind of scaffold ETH and speedrun Ethereum are there. So it kind of gets you straight to the tinkering with solidity and the understanding of like how things work and what works and what doesn't work. Uh, so if you have developer friends, tell them to speedrun Ethereum. Uh, but if you are a blockchain developer, follow me. Keep, keep up with me. I'm, I'm at Austin Griffith on Twitter. Let me pull that up for a second. This dude right here. This ugly mug. Find, find old Austin Griffith and see what he's up to, because I'm going to host a lot more of these smart contract games. So if you're, you're a smart contract builder, come hang out and let's, let's go build some stuff. I'm going to go to the Chainlink event tonight. Hit me up if you want the address, if you want to come hang out. I think, there's, I think the list is actually probably full. But yeah, I don't know. We can probably sneak you in. All right, who, what's going to happen here? All right, when my clock hits four, I'm going to copy whatever address here and send, send $200 of ETH to it. So yeah, C13, where are you at? Let's see, C13 is like maybe this green dude here. I wish I should, oh, I should have coordinates up here. The high score list should show, show coordinates. Like this dude right here, look at, look at, you're surrounded by gold, sir. You're surrounded by it. Just, just move once and pick it up. Oh, that might be the C dude. That might be C13. C13, you've got the winning amount of gold around you. Go south. All right, last minute. Oh, 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 C13 is on that goal. What's going to happen? Oh, man, if it's a tie, what am I going to do? What if it's both 300? So some of the golds are 50 and some of the golds are 100, and you have to read the events to figure out which ones, if you are specifically targeting. Oh, he went past it. C13, go back. Go back, C13. Oh, there, you, you, there goes your $200. I don't, think, I don't think they're going to get back in time. As soon as this flips to 4 p.m., I'm going to take the top person. C13, you got to go right and collect. Do it, do it, do it. Oh, this is awesome. All right, I need a screenshot of this thing. So cool. Oh, C13 is back on the gold. Oh, but it's 4 p.m. It's 4 p.m. Here's my list. All right, I need to send that to the crew. All right, thank you all very much. Uh, I'm going to send $200 uh, in USD of ETH to this address. So if you own that burner wallet, oh, that's not, a, oh, yeah, this was you. If you own that burner wallet, make sure to not destroy it. I'm going to send $200 to it. Is it you? Congratulations. Good job. <laughs> Great work. Awesome. I'll come sit over there and send it. Okay. Thank you all. Uh, yeah, hit me up at Austin Griffith on Twitter. Uh, look for Speedrun Ethereum. Look for more developer games coming in the future. Uh, reach out if you have any questions. I'm at Austin Griffith. My DMs are open. Thank you all very much. <laughs>